chemical bonds, introduction and review. So first, let's talk about this chapter as a whole. In this podcast, we're going to be doing a quick reminder of ionic and covalent bonding, as well as some very simple Lewis dot structures. From there, we'll move on and do more Lewis dot structures and more Lewis dot structures. You want to make sure you really get the hang of these and get these down pat before we move on to the next chapter, because everything is going to build on being able to draw these. We'll also do some resonance structures and bond strength versus length. For this podcast, we'll be focusing on the first two bullet points. The goal of bonding is to make sure that each element has a stable valence shell. This is often done by making it fully filled or giving it an octet. In other words, eight electrons in the outside shell. Although we'll also see that many atoms can break this rule. Atoms can do this in a couple of ways. It can accomplish a stable shell by either trading or sharing electrons. And what we'll see later is that sometimes it's actually somewhere in between. Here we will discuss the three types of bonding, although in this class we will mostly be focusing on the first two. In ionic bonding, the atoms trade electrons. This typically happens when you have a metal and a nonmetal together, and that is the easiest way to tell if something is ionic. Since one is close to an octet, and one may only have one or two electrons in its outside shell, it's favorable to make ions from the atoms by trading the electrons. In covalent compounds, all atoms may be close to an octet, so instead of trading electrons, they will share electrons. The last type is very interesting. However, we won't be discussing it in too great of detail in this class. This is metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is special because all of the electrons are delocalized. Because they don't belong to any particular atom, they are able to be moved across the metal. If electrons are added to one side, they can move across to the other. This is called being conductive and is responsible for the great things that we can do with electricity. Now let's go into a bit more detail on the first two types. Before we go into bonding, let's talk quickly about how we will represent these atoms. We will use Lewis dot structures. The symbol for the element goes on the inside, and the valence or outside shell electrons are represented by dots along the outside surrounding the element. When we want to represent a bond, we will typically do so with a line. Each line represents two electrons. Now let's talk about how bonds are formed. Let's look at an example of ionic bonding. We will look at the formation of potassium iodide. Potassium has one electron in its outside shell. And if we were to remove that one, it would have a full octet in the lower shell. Iodine has seven electrons in its outside shell, so if we were to add an electron to its outside shell, it would have a full octet. Therefore, it is favorable for the one potassium electron to be transferred to the iodine shell. What do you think it is that holds the potassium and the iodine together after trading electrons? Give this some thought before coming to class. Let's look at magnesium fluoride now. Magnesium has two electrons in its outside shell, and fluorine has seven. So magnesium would like to give up two electrons. However, it can't give both to fluorine since it only has room for one electron. Therefore, the magnesium will need to bind to two fluorines so that it can give one electron to each. You want to be able to picture this process as you go through making ionic compounds. However, there is a quick trick I can teach you to do this a little bit faster. You have to be a little careful about using this, as we'll see on the next slide, but it is a handy trick for the most part. If we know the typical charge that each ion takes, to figure out what combination they will be when combined, we can take the charge and move it to the base of the other atom. We need the overall compound to be neutral, and now we can calculate how the charges work together to show how the trick works. Al typically has a plus three charge. We have two of them, which gives us a total of plus six. We have three oxygens, each of which carry a minus two charge. This gives us a minus six for the oxygen. So a plus six and a minus six equal neutral overall, which is what all ionic compounds must be. Here's an example where blindly following the crisscross trick can get you into trouble. Ionic compounds always need to be the lowest whole number ratios. Be sure to note that this is not true for covalently bonded compounds. Now, if we follow the trick, like in the previous slide, we will get 
Mg2O2. While this does give us a neutral compound, it is not the lowest whole number ratio, so we must reduce down to MgO. In covalent bonding, the molecule will be sharing electron density to make up the octet. We represent these by using Lewis structures, as shown here. Typically, instead of representing all the bonds with shared dots, we'll draw a line. And I would highly recommend that you always do this as it keeps the structure cleaner when we start getting into very complex structures. Now, let's think about what would happen if atoms need more than one electron. How could something like oxygen, which only has six electrons, get a full octet? Let's look at how something like carbon dioxide bonding would work. Carbon only has four valence electrons, so it needs to gain four. Oxygen has six electrons, so it needs to gain two. This means that for everything to have a full octet, carbon needs to share two electrons with each oxygen. We can draw this in two different ways. The first is to leave the dots for the electrons. This isn't the standard way of doing it though. We typically will replace the electrons with lines just like on the last slide. Each line represents two electrons. And again, I highly recommend that you do this. This is as far as we're going to go into Lewis structures at the moment, and we'll go much more into detail when we get further into the chapter.